Hello, my name's Julian Edia, and I'm the author of this book, Car Aerodynamic Testing for Road and Track Second Edition. What I want to cover in today's video is a really interesting test and development process occurring on a Vauxhall VX220, otherwise known as an Opel Speedster. Now the car is owned by Daniel Bates. This isn't his car, this is just a generic photo I found to show the car. If we look at the rear three quarters, we can see some really interesting aerodynamics. So it's got these flying buttresses either side of a near vertical rear window, and then it's got this roof extension that we can see across the top. Looking downwards, we can see a large flat panel. And if we look at this view, we can see that that flat panel covers the mid-mount engine and also a rear luggage area. Now, the panel, the new panel that Daniel's making is shown here, and he's making it from expanded polystyrene. This will end up forming the plug for a fiberglass uh, mold. And you can see he's done a fantastic job of shaping it to give a nice progressive downwards contour, as well as match the actual shape of the opening where the panel has to fit. Now, Daniel's measuring panel pressures, aerodynamic panel pressures, and also aerodynamic flows, whether they're attached or separated. And he's measuring the panel pressures using this gear here. So we have a magnahelic gauge, which is a very sensitive differential pressure gauge. One side of that gauge connects, us, connects in turn to different pressure pucks. And these, uh, Daniel has 3D printed. You can buy these pressure pucks as well if you don't want to make your own. They comprise a disc, a little hole that comes in from the side into which this uh, narrow brass tube slides. And then there's a one millimeter hole in the, in the middle of each of the pressure pucks that actually senses the outside air pressure, the pressure acting on the panel. And you can see here how thin the pucks are so they don't disturb the airflow. To compare those pressures, because remember the magnahelic gauge is a comparative gauge, so we need to be able to compare it to something, we compare the pressures against the static pressure port of a pitot tube, which is mounted at the front of the car high on a pole. So that pressure doesn't change, and so any pressure changes we see are because of changing panel pressures. The attached or separated flow, the pattern of the airflow, is shown by tufts of yarn, normally wool, which are stuck to the car. All right, let's have a look. Here's the car in its testing form. There's the vertical pole at the front with the pitot tube on it. The uh, red hoses go to the pressure pucks as well as to the uh, static port of the pitot tube. Daniel's testing on a highway. Uh, it's got a nice uh, area you can pull off, which is good for safety when you're making changes to uh, puck positions or anything of that sort. So how did he go? What sort of results did he get? Well, let's look at this first. Car's doing 90 kilometers an hour, photographed from an adjoining car, and we can see some really interesting things. This is obviously before that extra panel, that new panel was put into place. So we would expect the airflow to be separating at the end of the roof. And if we look at the tufts here, 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 and here, we can see that they're actually pointing forwards. They're not pointing in the direction you would expect them to be pointing, they're actually pointing forwards. And that's because there's a big recirculating bubble occurring. So the airflow comes off here and does a big swirl around like that. And so that's why those tufts are all pointing forwards. All of this is in separated flow. The airflow just starts to reattach here. We can still see there's some separation. Not all the tufts are pointing backwards in nice neat rows. The flow attachment's a little bit better there, but again, not complete. And then we can see here and here, we do have flow reattachment. Closest to the camera here, there's all excellent attached flow. But if we look here in front of this scoop opening, we can see again the separation where the uh, fuel filler is. Now, I would suggest either this scoop is blocked, or if it is open to air, it's not flowing air very well at all. And so we have that uh, separation bubble ahead of the scoop. But the most interesting thing is this massive area of separation from here to here. Now what happens when we put that new panel on? Well, we can see that the pattern is just dramatically different, isn't it? So we have attached flow leaving the end of the roof, attached flow, attached flow, really nicely attached, 
attached, attached, we can see there's a little bit of separation there. And I'd say because the transition from this shape to this shape is just a fraction more abrupt than would be optimal, but it's a, a very small amount of separation. Attach flow, attach flow, attach flow. As we saw previously, attach flow on this panel closest to the camera. And also, as we saw previously, separation ahead of that scoop. So that the flow on the back of the car is absolutely transformed. It's just radically different. When we measure pressures, we would expect to see that massive difference reflected in the pressure readings as well. So let's look at those now. So this shows pressures measured at 90 kilometers an hour along the center line of the car using that gear we saw earlier. Orange arrows show positive pressures, which means the air is pushing on the panel. Blue arrows show negative pressures, which means that the air is pulling on the panels. So here at the very front of the car, the air is brought to a nearly complete halt and we have what's called the stagnation pressure, the highest positive pressure on the car. But the airflow wraps around these leading curves, generating low pressures, just like airflow wrapping over the upper surface of an aircraft wing. It's forced to change direction here, and so there's a high pressure at the base of the windscreen, but you can see in round figures it's only half as high as the stagnation pressure. Low pressure, low pressure, very low pressures there and there. In fact, lower than we could read on that gauge. And then low pressures, low pressures to here. This is all attached flow. The flow is flowing along the surface of the car. But remember back here, there was separation. In fact, we saw that big separation bubble. Low pressures, low pressures. But as the flow starts to reattach, the pressures increase. They're not as low, if you like. You can see that pattern because the length of the arrows is proportional to the pressures. As the airflow then wraps around the end of the rear spoiler, there's an extra low pressure, minus 63. So that's really interesting. All that area basically in separated flow, and even here, the, the flow attachment wasn't all that good, remember, and it's indicative of therefore of those low pressures. Behind the car in the wake, around minus 100, uh, if we take an average, and then interestingly, under the car, this car runs an underfloor flat under tray and a diffuser, minus 145. That is very interesting. Later, it'd be great if Daniel could do some undercar pressure measurements as well. All right, now I said there was a dramatically different flow when we did the tough testing. What's it look like in terms of pressures? Well, you can see these pressures are completely different. Firstly, they are lower here where the flow has stayed attached around that curve. But then as the airflow is forced to change direction, we have a whole range of higher pressures above atmospheric, the orange arrows. We saw no pressures on the back of the car earlier that were above atmospheric. So we've increased the pressures, especially on that last uh, part of the car that I'm showing now with the mouse. Now, it's hard to remember the pressures across the two different slides. So we've now got a slide that does a comparison. Comparison with or without that great big new rear panel. So no, there's no, notice there's no change. No change, no change, no change. Zero, zero difference. And that reflects the repeatability and accuracy of this sort of measurement where we wouldn't expect any change uh, to, to be occurring there and there isn't any. Now we get a lower pressure here and here than we did before because the airflow is now attached around that curve. But then as it's forced to change direction, we get a much higher pressure than we saw before over all of that area. Now here in the wake, the pressures are, are largely the same, just as we'd expect. And under the car, uh, they're, they're again largely the same. Looking at these pressures, I think we could go with a little bit bigger rear spoiler. I'd like to see these pressures a bit higher. I don't know if we could get from minus 142 to positive pressure, but I'm sure we could make that less negative. And why is that important? Well, two reasons. One is it reduces lift even more. And secondly, it's quite likely to reduce drag. These arrows all lean backwards. In, the pressures are acting on an inclined surface. And so if we can increase the pressures that are acting on that inclined surface, obviously there's a downwards push, but because the arrow is leaning backwards, there's a slight forwards push as well. In other words, a decrease in drag. However, if we increase the size of the spoiler, we're also going to be increasing the size of the wake. 
the disturbed air behind the car. And the bigger the wake, typically the larger the drag. And so it becomes a trade-off. Increasing pressures here will reduce drag and obviously reduce lift by quite a lot. But increasing the size of that rear spoiler increases drag through an increased wake. And so it's a trade-off. And, and this sort of measurement will show uh, how, how positive or negative that particular trade-off is. So a dramatic change shown through both tough testing and actual pressure measurements. So what were the results? Well, reduced lift. We've suddenly got a, a positive pressure on the back of the car that we didn't have before. And if we increase the size of that rear spoiler, I'm sure we could reduce lift even further. And uh, Daniel did some coast down testing from one higher speed to another speed. Uh, don't go to zero. That's, that's just a silly way of doing coast down testing. And he found that drag was clearly reduced. And that's what we would expect. So reduced lift and reduced drag and potentially uh, improving both of those even still further by increasing the size of that spoiler and making those measurements is just fantastic what you can see when you're doing these sorts of measurements. So a huge thanks to Daniel for making available that information. If you want to be able to do similar sorts of testing, car aerodynamic testing for road and track shows you all of these techniques. And if you want to have a good idea of what modifications to actually perform, if you want to reduce drag, reduce lift, even get downforce, then modifying the aerodynamics of your road car. Both books are out now. Thank you.